Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and another video here. Today I have something, I don't know if this is a little different, I just talk all the time. So this is a really chatty video and this is everything that I think you would want to know about D-stashes. I've mentioned in passing D-stashes on my channel from time to time and inevitably whenever I do, someone is always asking me either what is a D-stash or they're asking me where do I find these stashes? How do I find them? Because they're having trouble. And so I thought I would just do kind of an all-encompassing video about D-stashes. I'm personally not someone who D-stashes my own polishes, but I do purchase from D-stashes and I'll talk a little bit like in a blip at the end about that. It's not really pertinent to this video, but I I don't know, maybe people care, but I, I do purchase from them. So I thought I would just explain D-stashes in general, some best practices when buying from D-stashes and just how to find them on your own. I have a lot of notes on this. I anticipate it being a longer one. I will timestamp it in the description box. So check that out if you want to skip around. But with all that said, let's hop into it. So first and foremost, what is a D-stash? This is a question I see in my comments from time to time. It's kind of an unfamiliar word, I think, if you don't know what it is. So a D-stash is basically just when someone is selling a polish from their own stash or their own collection, they are de-stashing it. They're getting rid of it by selling it. And the polish could be brand new. It could be used. Usually that is specified in the listing. And people de-stash polishes for any number of reasons. Maybe they just don't like the color or the formula. Maybe they don't like that brand anymore. Maybe they need money for any reason. Maybe they're just trying to make space and that's just not in their top tier polishes. It could be for tons and tons and tons of reasons, not inherently negative to the polish itself. It's just they don't want it anymore and now you get the chance to buy it. Big collectors as well as swatchers will de-stash polishes. So I predominantly focus more on indie de-stashes at this point in my life, but there are mainstream de-stash resources as well. So, you know, you can find stuff either way. I have found indies that I've been looking for and mainstreams that I've really wanted in de-stashes. So they are a kind of valuable tool, especially if something is either out of stock or it was limited edition and is no longer being sold. A lot of times your only hope to find this polish is in a D-stash. So the first question I kind of asked when I first heard about D-stashes years ago was, is this sanitary? Because buying secondhand cosmetics seemed just a little bit off to me. I wasn't really aware that there was a big market for this kind of a thing, but I ended up doing a little bit of research on my own. And while I am by no means a scientist, I am not an expert in this topic, I will share with you what I found in that research. I found several articles that stated that the solvents that nail polish contains naturally in you know the state of its product are enough to self-sterilize and pretty much minimize any risk that you would have of any bacteria growing or like remaining within the polish after somebody used it. And as soon as I read that, I was like, oh yeah, that does make sense because I mean, when you go, if you go to a nail salon, there are walls and walls filled with polish that are used amongst dozens and dozens of clients and they are all typically coming away scot-free. I think typically if anybody does get an infection in a salon, it's due to poor sanitization of their tools and not from the bottle of nail polish itself. So my feeling is if a nail salon can use the same bottle on like 24 different people and be fine, I think I can buy a polish that has been used once by somebody secondhand and really not bear any risk. So how do you even begin to find these D-stashes? Well, it's a lot simpler than you might think. There are quite a lot of outlets and my three like main focuses are Instagram, I use Facebook, and I use Reddit. Other options do include like eBay and Mercari and blog sales. And I've purchased from eBay a couple times. I've purchased from Mercari once and those have been great experiences, but I've really done those minimally. So I'm not as familiar with the process. However, there are plenty of people who do search through those as well. Actually, some people just find polishes 
in like Goodwill and stuff like that and they get really lucky. But if you want like a more fine-tuned search, the three that I'm going to talk to you about are going to be the best options for you. So let's start with Instagram. There are a lot of people who have their own dedicated Instagram de-stashing page. And there they post photos of the polish, they create the listing, they tell you how much it's going to cost, any details you need to know about it in the caption. And then typically most people, once the polish is sold, they remove that picture off their Instagram and that's that. You could always just search for de-stashes on Instagram, just putting nail polish de-stash in the search bar. But the best way that I've seen to find de-stashes is I went to some of my favorite swatchers Instagram pages and in their bio, they usually have a link or information about where their de-stash is. Not everybody has one, but let me tell you, a lot of the bigger swatchers tend to have some sort of de-stash page because they cannot keep everything that they receive because they receive a lot. I will link several down below for you, but like off the top of my head, three of the biggest de-stash pages that I'm constantly checking are Polish with Ray, uh, Nail Lacquer Therapy, and Cork Manicures. They all three I've purchased from in the past and I've had wonderful experiences with them, but there are others that I follow. And then from there, a lot of people's de-stash pages follow other de-stash pages. So sometimes I'll just go and I'll just check, oh, who's following, you know, Nail Lacquer Therapy's de-stash. And I found a couple other de-stashers that way. So I have just kind of amassed like a ton of pages that way, just following and watching them that way. Sometimes your favorite Instagrammer will also mention it in their stories on their main Instagram page. And they'll just say like, hey, I just uploaded more to my D-Stash page, check it out. So keep your eyes peeled, watch their stories, check their bios if you are interested in anything like that. And I highly recommend following the actual D-Stash page, not just remembering like, oh, I should go check on it. Because when you follow it, you know, the listings get pushed into your Instagram feed, but also checking their stories. Sometimes they'll let you know when to expect an update, or potential sales because some people do even do sales within their de-stash pages. So you don't wanna miss out on any of that good stuff. The second website that I like to use for de-stashes is Facebook. And this is actually one of the only reasons that I even keep my Facebook. It's for hobby related Facebook pages and this is a hobby related Facebook page. So some brands do have buy, sell, trade specific Facebook pages in addition to their like original Facebook page. And these will usually be listed as like the brand name dash BST for buy, sell, trade. So if you are looking for a specific brand, it wouldn't hurt to check out a page like that. However, the biggest de-stash page that I personally am aware of is the Nearly No Rules Facebook page, which a lot of people abbreviate to NNR. You can buy from others, you can sell your own polishes, you can post what you are looking for, you can trade with other people. When they say Nearly No Rules, like they really do mean it over there. A lot of times I see people doing like big grab bags and mystery polish sales as well. So if you're into that, you want like a grab bag of indies or something like that, that is a great place to go check out because I mean, who doesn't want a fun little mystery bag? And there's constantly activity there. Like I see multiple posts a day. People are always selling, buying, trading, everything. And it's, it's great. Like if you post like, hey, I've been looking for this. There's a lot of people who are very helpful and they'll point you like, I just saw a listing the other day, check it out. Or, you know, hey, I think this person has that polish for sale. You know, it's really, really a nice group if you are in search of something. And finally, the last website that I use is Reddit, specifically the subreddit r slash Reddit Lacarista Swap. Again, these will all be linked in the description. This is actually the very first place that I bought from a D-Stash. And this is similar to the Facebook page where people can post what they're looking for, they post things that they're selling, and then you can interact with the user in your comments and decide, you know, am I gonna buy this or not? It's definitely not as active as the Facebook page I mentioned or Instagram de-stashes, but there are some gems from time to time. I have gotten some steals of a deal over there and it's just been a really good experience. I've never really had an issue with anybody on there. So definitely I would recommend that as well. And I believe 
the, yeah, the subreddit name is spelled wrong. So yeah, like I said, it'll be linked down below. So now that you know what a DStash is and how to find them, how do we shop from them? And that is where this gets a little bit gray because every seller has their own rules that are specific to them, especially on Instagram. Like most Instagram DStash pages have a little rules post pinned and you need to read that before you even start trying to buy. And it is very important that you follow those rules because if you don't, it might disqualify your chance on buying the polish that you want. So just always do a brief run through. Whenever I'm buying from a DStash that I haven't bought from in a little while, I just refresh myself on their rules and make sure that I'm following their specific guidelines so that I don't cause an inconvenience to the seller and I also don't miss out on my chance to get the polish that I want. Now over on the Facebook page, there's a few different ways that people sell stuff. And I mean, the first is the very straightforward. This is how much this one costs first come first serve and you claim it in the comments. That's pretty typical. And that's kind of how it is on Instagram as well in my experience. But there are also auction style listings where they'll list a polish and say auction starting at, you know, $10. And price increments can be raised in increments of $1. And then everyone in the comments comments their bid until the time frame that was designated in the post is up. And then whoever had the highest bid therefore gets to buy the polish. The last style that I often see on the Facebook group is deal or no deal. And the seller will list a polish and then basically you state the price that you want to pay for the polish and they will tell you deal or no deal. And if it's no deal, they just pass on to the next offer until they find an offer that they deem acceptable for the polish they're selling. I personally have never done a deal or no deal style. I just never found a polish that I wanted that bad. So I've never done that, but I have done the auction style and I have just outright purchased polishes from a D-Stash and it's very, very easy. Just read the rules. That's really the most important part. Read the rules, make sure you're following them so that you don't get disqualified from future D-Stashes opportunities. I think typically most people do take PayPal. Every single D-Stash that I've done, I've paid via PayPal, except for the very first one where I actually paid cash because I met the person <laughs> in real life. Um, she lived really close to me and it was a lot of stuff. So we ended up just exchanging cash for a product. That sounded shady. Cash for nail polish. Another thing is that sometimes you're going to be the one to pay for shipping. Sometimes the seller pays for shipping. Sometimes the shipping is wrapped into the cost of the polish. And you'll see that as like, oh, this polish is $25 shipped, which means like that already includes the cost of the shipping. And that should always be in the listing somewhere or somewhere on the Instagram D stash or something like that. So just make sure you know what you're doing before you make your purchase. But overall, buying from a D stash is really easy. It's pretty straightforward. And once you start looking at more and more D stashes, you'll see that most people have the same, if not just very similar rules, and you will become very accustomed to it very quickly. Next, I just have like a little bit of a definition section for you because there are a lot of acronyms and phrases that people use in their posts that if you are brand new to D stashes, you might not know what half of these mean and you might be a little bit confused trying to read the posts. This is by no means an exhaustive list, but this is just what I could think of off the top of my head that I see most commonly. So the first one is ISO or ISO, as I say in my own head. And that just means in search of. When you're looking for a specific polish, you just type ISO and then the name or names of all the polishes you are looking for. Typically when you post an ISO, a lot of people tend to specify whether they're looking for it to trade for. And if they're gonna trade for it, they list what they have available for trades or you let them know that you're just looking to buy, no trades, you don't have anything to trade, something like that, just so that people know which direction to point you if they're aware of that polish being sold elsewhere. Next is D-I-S-O or DISO, as I say in my head, and that is pretty much the same as before, but that just means desperately in search of, and I don't really think there's any significance or really any real difference between the two, except for you're really, really wanting this polish at this point. I touched on this one earlier, but NNR is the nearly no rules 
Facebook group. I've seen it referenced like this in other Facebook groups that I'm in and they'll say go check out NNR, but be careful because NNR can also mean not nail related in those Facebook groups. So just make sure that you are reading the context of that sentence. BNNU or sometimes just shortened to BN means bought new, never used or just bought new, and then the never used is implied. That means they're selling you a store fresh, never been used, probably never been opened polish. And some people just get the polish, they see the bottle and they go, you know what, I don't want that anymore. I realize I didn't need it. And that's why new nail polishes get sold like this. Or they got a duplicate and they wanna sell that one off and they just never use the polish. I tend to prioritize bought new, never used versus anything that has been used just because, you know, who doesn't want a brand new bottle, but I buy used polishes all the time as well. Another thing you'll see is not first owner. It's kind of the opposite of the previous and why they say like not first owner versus this is used is because when you're not the first owner, you can't really vouch for how much it was used by the previous owner. You can only vouch for yourself. So it's hard to know how much it actually has been used. So that's why we say not first owner versus used. Another common one is see fill line. And that just means they're going to post a picture where you're able to see the fill line of the actual polish. A lot of times when I buy polishes from D-Stashes, they're used only once or twice. Like the owner knows exactly how many times they've used it because it's usually fairly new or like they keep track. But in this case where it's been used enough where there is a significant fill line or just a visible fill line, they will say see fill line. And that way you can use your judgment on how much you wanna pay or whether this particular listing is worth it to you. And the last term that I see a lot is swatched. And this one I have seen heavily debated on the true definition of it across several Facebook pages. So let me just give you a quick overview. If you just see the word swatched and no details following it, this can mean a lot of things. Some people think that swatched just means on a one finger or a single swatch stick. Some people think it can mean on four fingers. Some people think it can mean a whole hand, but typically when it's all five fingers, people refer to it as a half mani. I've seen people say swatched on five fingers as well. So it just depends. Sellers are typically pretty specific in my experience. They'll say swatched on a swatch stick, swatched on one finger, swatched on four fingers, or I've seen used in one full mani as well. But if it just says swatched, it doesn't hurt to ask a little bit more detail about that if you care. For me, if it's swatched on one finger versus five fingers, that's not a huge difference. It's not really significant to me because one versus five fingers, like it's really not that big of a deal. It'd be more of a concern if it said swatched on one finger and then the fill line was halfway. I'd be like, first of all, how big are your nails? Second of all, like that's a lie. But yeah, more and more people are saying swatched on however many fingers or the manner in which it was swatched. So it's really not so gray, but when I do just see the word swatched, I'm kind of like, what do you mean? What do you mean? Where was it swatched? What, what was it swatched on? So let's get into some best practices and just cautionary items when it comes to de-stashes. I personally have never had a bad experience when it comes to de-stashing. However, just because I haven't had a bad experience, doesn't mean they don't happen. We are all but strangers on the internet. And when it comes to exchanging money, you know, there's always some level of risk involved. And so you do want to be careful and make sure you're protecting yourself. First of all, if something feels wrong or off, there's no harm, there's no shame in just backing out and saying, you know what, never mind, I don't want to do this anymore. I've changed my mind. Now, on certain pages, if you do this, that can make it so that you cannot trade or buy or sell on their pages anymore because sometimes they have like clauses or rules where it's like once you've stated you're going to buy it the sales price is final and that's that but to me i'd rather get kicked off of a facebook page than have my identity or money or whatever stolen just because i wanted to buy a couple nail polishes on the internet i'd rather be safe than sorry so if you do truly feel like this is a bad feeling just cut it out, you know, just, just don't even worry about it. Just leave the deal and be done with it. This is one that I feel like I shouldn't have to say, but you know, the amount of Facebook pages I've seen people complain about this in, 
it needs to be said. If you get burned by a seller, if a seller screws you over, if they do you dirty, do not buy from that seller again. Don't do it. Don't give them a second chance because you will get burned again. Some people just scam to scam. They want your money. They want the fun of getting one over on you. I don't know what their motives are, but if they do end up taking your money, don't buy from them again. Like don't trust them. In a lot of buy sell trade groups, I have seen that they do have lists of known scammers that have been since kicked out, but like, you know, be cautious of in other groups, they let you know. And if you do get scammed by somebody in a buy sell trade group, let one of the mods know so that they can take proper action and precaution and we can prevent that from happening to other people in the future. If you are going to meet up with somebody in person that you are buying from or selling to, use caution. You know, I'm not saying don't do it. Obviously, I've done it. I just said earlier that was how I first bought from a D-Stash. And, you know, I've bought and sold on Facebook Marketplace and things like that. But you should be very careful when you're doing these things. You should always, always, always have a buddy or somebody who knows where you're going when you are doing this exchange. And also, for me, it's very important to meet in a crowded, public well lit area regardless of if your buddy is coming or not because it's just you just want to make sure you know let's be cautious let's let's practice good safety and the last thing on my list is just a reminder to have fun with it don't let d-stash hunting work you up i have seen people get really upset on groups because they couldn't get the polish that they wanted or the polish that they wanted was really highly priced or, you know, there are people who do buy from highly anticipated or very limited launches and they'll buy multiples and then they will flip them on nail polish groups for like quadruple the price. And people get very upset about that. And while I understand it can be really frustrating to not get the item that you wanted or you looked forward to, like don't let that eat you up. The people who are flipping them for like 50, 60, 70 dollars, that's crazy to me. Never, never break the bank for a single polish. You know, even if it is limited edition, I'm positive. I'm 100% positive. You'll be able to find something in the future that is similar or a dupe. Like, don't let that discourage you. Just scroll past it and move on with your life. So that is my big overview on what D-Stashes are, how to shop from them, and best practices, all that information. If you have more questions, let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to answer them as best as I can. And if I can't, I'm sure someone else in my comments can because everybody who follows me here is so helpful and helps each other out in my comments. I love that. But some people have asked me, not too many, so I don't know if anybody actually cares about this part, like two people have asked me, um, why do I not de-stash? And I thought I would just talk about it here because I like to talk about myself. So for some collectors and swatchers and people on YouTube and people who are not on YouTube, just everybody in this hobby, for some of us, de-stashing is just part of the hobby. It's part of the enjoyment. They like to sell polishes, to buy more polishes and things like that. And for me, I just, I don't, I don't like that. I don't want to do that. I don't, I'm not saying I don't like that for others. I love that for others because then I can buy from their de-stashes. But I personally just don't like that for myself and my own collector life. Every long-term hobby I've ever had, I tend to hold on to everything hobby related right up until I am absolutely 100% unequivocally done with that hobby. For me, I'm just concerned that at some point my feelings on any item in that hobby that maybe I'm not super excited about right now, my feelings might come full circle and I might want that again. And I don't wanna to have to go out and spend another 10, 20, whatever, however many dollars it costs to buy that and re-add it to my collection. So I tend to just sit on it until I'm 100% certain I'm done with every aspect of that hobby. And then that's it. One example of this in my life is just I used to collect books like you wouldn't believe. I was a book hoarder. I loved having tons and tons and tons of books. But when you're someone who moves as often as I do, having that many books is a hassle to move. And so what I ended up doing was I was going to be done with the book collecting aspect 
of my book hobby. I still read all the time. I like to read. I either get library books or read them on my Kindle or whatever. But as soon as I finish a book, I return it to the library. Or if I bought a paper copy, I give it away to someone that I think would like to read it. Because I myself, I don't reread books typically that often. And they're free from the library. So if I really want to reread it, I'll get it from the library. But when I decided I was done collecting books, I slowly but surely gave those books away to anybody who wanted them. And that was that. And I've never felt regret over it. But I think that if I had started giving away those books before I made that final decision, I would have felt a lot of regret. And I feel like that's what would happen to me if I tried to de-stash nail polish. Another reason I don't de-stash is because a lot of the reasons that people tend to de-stash they don't really affect me in the same way. One of the big ones that I see is I don't have enough space, people say, and that's why they are selling their polishes. But me, I have plenty of space. I have tons and tons of space. I could install like 10 more Helmers in this room and yeah, I'd be a little cramped, but I have the space for it if I really wanted to. Space is not the issue and neither are finances. Some people do sell polishes because they just, they're running uh, on empty in their banks or they just need a little extra money. For me, if that ever happened to me, if I needed extra money, I have other stuff that I would sell long before I tried to sell nail polish that I could sell and I would get more money in one go than I would be selling my nail polish and getting like five to 10 bucks per bottle. Like that just seems like a hassle. And also de-stashing just seems a little bit like labor intensive. You know, I already work full time. I do YouTube now and like that, has become the equivalent of probably a full-time job in a week with the amount that I'm planning and editing and filming and all that and swatching and blah, blah, blah. And so it's like, I'm basically working two full-time jobs, one that barely pays me and one that also barely pays me. <laughs> Guess which one's which. Um, and then I'm also keeping a home and trying to maintain relationships with friends and family. And so I just don't have the time. I just don't have the time to keep track of and find packaging for and ship out and invoice and all that. I already ship out an invoice at my job. I don't wanna do it in my personal life. And also I'm afraid of the post office and so I don't wanna go there. But yeah, I'm totally content with how my collection is and how fast it grows and how much I have right now. That may change in the future. I may completely change my mind and I might start de-stashing, who knows? We'll see. I'm not closing the door on it, but ultimately I just really like what I have and I enjoy it in its entirety, even if I can't use every single polish all the time. So yeah, that was, I guess, de-stashing 101. I should teach nail polish college. That would be fun, right? Like I said earlier, let me know if you have any further questions, drop them in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.